I'm really confused by the perception of Kyrie Irving versus how it compares to the facts. Because the facts are, for the last five years, he has not been an impact guy in the playoffs at all. The last time he was truly an impact guy in the playoffs was the 2017 playoffs, which he was awesome. Then he has not been able to stay in the floor, even dating back to Duke. I mean, really like the 15, 16, 17 range, and he got hurt in the 15 playoffs, but 16 and 17, I guess, are the only two times we've seen him healthy, durable, and productive on a good team. We haven't seen it in five years. That Nobody seems to care about this. He's 30 years old now. He is who he is. Wait, so you're telling me the only time we've seen Kyrie Irving productive is when he's played arguably the greatest player of all time? Think about right. it. Like, he's been the, like, oh, he's the number two on a championship team. But it's not like you're the, and no insult to, like, say, like a Dwayne Wade or a Dirk who were the number one on championship teams. No insult to those guys, but he wasn't the number two to one of those guys. He was the number two to arguably the greatest player of all time. Since then, he's done nothing in the postseason. And like, I, I know that Tatum made some comments about superstar and he's going back and forth with Taylor Rooks during that Bleacher Report interview. And they're debating whether Damian Lillard is one. Lillard, to me, is the better player. And, you know, part of its leadership, part of its durability uh, and the other stuff, I'll take my chances, even if Kyrie is slightly more skilled. And it's not about one on one. Of course, like Kyrie, the, it's it's about five on five. And I've had this discussion in the past before when it comes to like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and like even Allen. Allen Iverson might be able to beat Magic or Bird one on one. Uh, Kobe Bryant probably beats Magic or Bird one on one. But who's the better NBA player? It's Magic and Bird because they make their teammates better. They fit into a team concept. Kyrie Irving doesn't do that. So, and you know, Bill, if I could also as well point this out, uh, remember that final play where Kyrie's dribbling right before Tatum finishes the layup uh, at the end of game one? Kyrie stops. Exactly. So uh, not only the defensive play, but go back on offense because Eddie did bring up a good point on this. Oh, the hero actually, ball play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the hero ball play. So many people, and I thought this initially as well, many people are like, well, Kyrie, you know, the crowd shouldn't get on his case in game two, right? Because Kyrie like torched him in game one. He scored a bunch of points. I forget the number, but Eddie brought up a good point the next day. He's like, no, the crowd actually won because on that final offensive possession for Brooklyn, Kyrie's like, I'm going to show them. And he blocked everybody else out around him. He dribbles till there's about in circles till there's about three seconds left in the shot clock, kicks it out to Durant, who's draped by Tatum. Tatum can't get the shot off. So it was actually one, the crowd getting in his head, and two, just a horrible display of dribbling because he felt he could do it all himself at the uh, expense of his team. You look at his last, so since the 2017 finals, he's played in 22 playoff games over the next five seasons. And he's 22, five and five are his yeah. stats, right? People seem to think he's a superstar. Look, he made the biggest, one of the biggest shots in the history of the finals in 2016 in a game that was a rock fight. Nobody was making anything. And then he makes this three. He's great. 2017, that Cavs team was incredible offensively. But it was five years ago. It was 2017. People are judging him now based on like the Twitter clips and the YouTube clips and some of the highlights versus what he was, which was they got swept. He was healthy. He played. He had no injuries. He was 100% healthy. He is not. To me, it's like when you're talking about, all right, top threes and you just go through and the Brooklyn top three is KD. 34, who is still one of the best five day players in the league. But then you have Kyrie, who just has not proven he's a reliable regular season guy or the same kind of, you know, elite, elite player performer. And then Simmons, who doesn't want to play basketball and who hasn't played since May of 2021, which by my calculations is 16 months ago. And we don't know if he's playing now. He still has a back issue. And those, that's your big three. I mean, think of the juxtaposition. It's Durant, who I think we both agree, probably loves basketball as much as anybody that's ever played. And then it's two guys. I'm not sure who wants to play less. Is it Kyrie or is it is it Ben Simmons? And, and that's the point about like wanting to play. When all of a sudden did Kyrie become the guy that's like going to be the torchbearer for Kobe Bryant? Because what's the big, like, if you're going to be, like, what, if I think of Kobe Bryant, even as a Celtic fan, like, the one thing I respected about him and the reason I loved him is because he loved to play basketball. Like, it was his sole focus, and he played through anything, whether it was an injury, whether it was the incident in Colorado. And Kyrie is kind of... How about his Achilles? He he blew out his Achilles and shot the free throws. Exactly. And Kyrie's the complete opposite. And this is supposed to be the torchbearer for him where he does everything he can to avoid playing basketball. It's insane. The Nets right now have the third best odds on FanDuel to win the title, which I just, I honestly don't understand it. 
Because think of all the variables. You have the best player on the team openly tried to get the coach and GM fired, whether that was some sort of tactical move to get traded, I don't know. But that was the thing that happened, that he requested the dismissal of his coach and GM. So you have that. You have Kyrie, who is basically a 50 to 60 game uh, a year player. And then the playoffs is pretty one-sided and not a defensive force at all. You have Simmons. I have no idea what to expect from him. We have no idea how he's going to respond to pressure. You have Curry coming off ankle surgery. You have Joe Harris coming off an entire missed season. Uh, and then a bunch of young guys who are improving and the media microscope of just every move, quote, everything is going to be dissected. And somebody like Kyrie, he has something every day. He can't help himself. So I just think, I think it's going to be a soap opera and a mess. And if I was like, if you could tell me this is actually going to be great or this is going to be an absolute disaster, I would go absolute disaster. You didn't even mention what their their center position is like as well. I mean, I think they need to shore that up. I mean, what is it right now? It's Nick Claxton, so uh, who's who's good. But I mean, you look right. at the other centers that on these competing teams at the other big Giannis and Robert Williams, pretty good. Al Horford, what are they going to do in that spot? And you know, Kyrie. Let's see. I mean, now he understands maybe that nobody around the league wants him. That he's playing for a contract. And if we do get a focus, Kyrie, I do love the talent, but the the question is the focus. 